start, we thought we'd get you warmed up, so at least sing a few carols. So we're going to um, hopefully sing, which one do we put on first? Oh, Little Town of Bethlehem, hymn 304. So the words will be on the screen. Just remain seated as we sing together, Oh, Little Town of Bethlehem. This is your warm-up. In the lead up to Christmas this year, we've had um, two carol singing events. First of all, around the, car- the Christmas tree at Cardwell Bay, which was a bit chilly, to say the least. And then secondly, just uh, the other night, in, um, just outside the Christmas tree in Guruk, around the Christmas tree in Guruk. And neither places did anybody come and give us any money. Not even to shut us up, <laughs> which is quite good. So we're going to remain seated and we'll sing um, Once in Royal David City. Just again, as your second warm-up, this is to get your vocal cords moving.
Thank you for coming along tonight. It's so nice to see you here, and it's great to be back to some sense of normality after the last few years that have been so difficult for all of us. And it's great to have this opportunity to meet in this watch night service. It's always one of the most favorite things, I think, in our church calendar, the watch night reality of this just time coming together after all the hub and the busyness of the lead up to Christmas. How many of you have been busy? Yes, yes. Anybody just sitting at home doing nothing? Best of luck. Anybody wish they were home, sitting at home doing nothing? Yeah. We take this time out for sharing together and welcoming the coming of the Christ child into Christmas morning. Welcome to you all. Welcome to um, visitors from wherever you may be, and we are delighted to see you here tonight. There will also be, I think we're putting out this live, so if people will be watching on Facebook as well, no doubt. Delighted to say we share the service this, this evening. I keep on saying this morning. I welcome three people into St. John's at 7 o'clock. So I was saying good morning, which is quite worrying. It was dark out. I'm never up when it's dark. Anyway. Um, delighted to welcome Reverend Terry Peterson from St. John's. As you know, we share with St. John's for the 7 o'clock and watch night service. And also the Reverend Anne Fife. Anne is here in Old Gurukin Ashton for a year on placement for familiarization as she moves from the United Presbyterian Church USA into the Church of Scotland. So we welcome and both um, Anne and Terry tonight as we share in our service. We've got Callum playing uh, for us. And we've got Alison and John upstairs doing all the audiovisual stuff, so thanks to them. Also thanks to those who have been serving you tea and coffee and things through next door. Christmas pies. Did you get a Christmas pie? I came back home last night to a bag at the front door of the manse. And inside was a card from someone I know. And he said, most people are having turkey for their dinners. The lucky few get to have killy pies. And the bag contained two killy pies. <laughs> they were very good. But then again, they always are. So let us come before God in our worship and in our praise on this holy night, on this night of anticipation, and this night of the coming of joy. We stand and sing. If you are able, I invite you to stand and sing as we share in Angels from the Realms of Glory, hymn 324. It is our tradition to stand as we sing, but please only do so if you feel you're able to. If you're not, feel, if you feel you prefer to sit, please remain seated. It is not a problem. Please just do, do, do remain seated. 324, Angels from the Realms of Glory.
Our first reading is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Creator God, we give you thanks, for your word creates worlds. Your breath brings life. Your love is the energy of the universe. Here we are, gathered joyful and triumphant on this special night because of what you have done. On this night, we remember your promise to be with us, your word of love and grace and justice wrapped in human flesh. On this night, we listen again and hear your voice calling through the dazzling darkness and the deep shadows. You are coming among us once again, revealing your love for your world, calling us into new life by bringing your kingdom to earth in a baby. Your presence shines with glory, even as your fullness dwells in fragile flesh, not in the official structures, but in borrowed homes and among working people, in an occupied land and a troubled time. As you created in the beginning, you are creating still and calling us to join in your handiwork. We give you thanks that as you walked in the garden, as you led your people, as you spoke through your prophets, you meet us here again tonight, whether we are prepared or not, whether it feels familiar or strange, whether we are in the appointed place or out in the fields, even now you break open the barrier between heaven and earth. And we expected you O oh God, or at least we hoped for you, yet still your coming surprises us. When you break through, pushing your way into our lives, when we aren't quite ready, all we can do is give you our full attention. Like a baby we can't take our eyes off of, we look to you in wonder, in awe, and a little bit of fear. What will you be like? How will you change us? How can we do our best for you? Yet you just reach out and take hold of our hands and our hearts, offering love beyond measure and asking only the same in return. That was a night like so many other nights, O oh God, a night just like tonight, when stars may stray from their course and carols echo in the heavens, when our hearts sense something and our bodies tingle with expectation, it could happen again. It is happening now. 
On this night, we joyfully remember you creeping into our midst, quiet and vulnerable in Jesus Christ, born of Mary, born to be with us, born to love us, born to save us, born to free us. When we worry, O oh God, that we are not up to the task, Remind us that you would not call us if you did not believe in us. As we come again to the manger, help us make room for you to enter our lives. Speak your word of power in our hearts and transform us once again into light for your world, not just for Christmas, but for every day of the year. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. Amen. We sing together, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. If you are comfortable doing so, I invite you to stand as we sing.
difícil. And now a reading called What in the World Are We Waiting for God? What in the world are we waiting for, God? Well, I guess it depends on where you sit. In some places, we wait for the sales to start and parties to crank up. We wait for noise and music and laughter. We wait for food and fun to fill us with cheer. You are the life of the party. God of all, help us to be careful and considered. Help us to fill our lives with good things. In a world where there is so much stuff to be had, help us to wait for what is real. In a world where success is measured in money and possessions, help us not to fall into the trap of trying to satisfy our souls with things which do not satisfy an eternal yearning. Jesus Christ, help us to wait for you. What in the world are they waiting for, God? Well, I guess it depends on where you sit. In some places, they will wait for life to start and life to end. Existence, a reality that cannot be covered up or filled with fluff. The easy life with extras a party they weren't invited to. God, upon whom we wait, we bring our world to you and ask for your help. Not that you will wave a magic wand and all will be fed, but so that you open our hearts to the reality of our privilege, that we realize the power of caring enough to share. What in the world are we waiting for, God? Good question. Call us to look for the answers together. I don't know about you, but I'm not very good at waiting. <laughs> Some people are blessed with the gift of patience. I am not one of those people. My most recent and trying experience of waiting was for my husband's visa, which took about three months longer than we were expecting. That was a long wait. Or maybe you find yourself waiting for results or for answers or for signs or for the service to be over so you can go home. <laughs> maybe you find yourself waiting for something else, something you don't even know how to put words to. And it's not easy and it's not always fun, but during Advent we're reminded that hope and peace and joy and love can be found even in the waiting. We also are reminded that it's not a passive waiting. We're not just sitting and twiddling our thumbs. We're actively waiting. Hopefully we're praying and listening and talking and discerning and acting in the ways that we feel called while we wait. Most importantly, we're reminded that we're not alone when we wait, even though it might feel like it sometimes. By you being here tonight, whether in the sanctuary or watching online from home, you are part of this community. You are not alone because of that. And also, we're not alone because of God, whose birth we are waiting for tonight. The God who came to dwell among us, to be human with us, that is who we wait for and who waits with us. So whatever you are waiting for and whatever that looks like for you, know that the child who was born for us, who enter, entered our world on that first Christmas night, is with you always, even when you're waiting. You are not alone. The waiting's nearly over. If you were following your advent calendar, Calendar, you opened the 24th window today. The waiting's nearly done. The midnight hour approaches. We move from the eve of Christmas into Christmas Day itself. I think as I grow older, the reality of Christmas changes somewhat because 
of the expectations we have. And I suspect, like many of us, I spend a lot of time looking back the way remembering Christmas's past. But we live here in the present. This Christmas, what are you waiting for? What are you hoping for? What are your expectations on this Christmas Eve? The waiting's nearly over. So let us come to sing to God's glory, hymn 309, Still the Night. In Advent, we wait patiently as a church. We count down the Sundays, and the first Sunday of Advent, we light our first candle and we think of the coming of hope. And yet, while we gather here in this time in 2022, hope seems in short supply. The number of people calling out in need worried about what is happening to them in the financial situation we find ourselves in, in these difficult times, as we wait during Advent, hope seems a forlorn context. Then we come to seek and share the possibility of peace peace in our world. Who knew when we gathered in 2021 and watch night as we prayed for peace in the world that only a few months later we would see war in the footsteps of Europe once again in the horror of Ukraine. Everywhere we look we see that peace seems to be gone from the world and peace from our own lives. Many of us have gone through difficulties in this year where we have questioned the peace of our own lives. It seems that darkness threatens to extinguish the reality of peace. And then we are called to remember joy. Joy to the world. Joy is coming at Christmas. 
And yet, where are the smiles on faces? Perhaps only through the children do we see the full reality and wonder of Christmas. Because we see in them the innocence of Christmas. How many of us feel that joy at times when we get older? That joy seems to evaporate like snow off a dike. As we become more cynical, joy seems in short supply. Joy to the world. We hope. But is it there? And then we remind ourselves in the last Sunday of the reality of love. Love that never dies, as we are told in Corinthians. Love that is the very basis of life, and yet love that seems in such short supply in so many situations, in so many places. Love. And yet we are told to love one another by Jesus. We are told to love our enemies and love our neighbors. How difficult it is. And so many times we feel that love is gone when we feel difficulties in our own lives and lose someone we love. Love seems to go. And then there is darkness. And then there is the reality of what Christmas Day is about. The coming of light. John talks and tells us about light coming into the world. Light that is Christmas. Light that is hope. Light that brings peace. Light that brings joy. Light that brings love. And that, lo- that light is Jesus Christ. The eternal light. The light that was in the world from the very beginning the light that the darkness of the world can never understand and never extinguish. The light of all these things. And as we gather on this Christmas Eve, as we journey into the reality of the dawning of a new Christmas day, what we are, what is expected of us as Christian men, women, and children, what's expected of us as a church is to be the embodiment of the living light in the world. To be light to the world. As fishy music sing to us in this song for Christmas, as we sit and think for a few minutes here tonight. Thank you. 
Christmas life. Christ is born in Bethlehem. Christ, Emmanuel, God is with us. And when we, light, when we allow the light of Christ to shine through us, then there can be hope. When we let the light of Christ shine through us, then there can be peace. And when we let the light of, shy, of Christ shine through us, then joy will be known in the world because that world is living in the love of God and through love all things can be. This is Christmas Day. Christ is born. Christ who comes to save us all. Thanks be to God. May I wish you all a very blessed and happy Christmas and let us together share the Christmas light, the peace and wonder and joy of Christmas be with you all. Christmas to you. As you pass the light one to another, let us wish each other a Merry Christmas indeed, and may the joy and wonder of this Christmas day be in all your hearts. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Ian. God bless. I'm going to bung the tree by putting things. Merry Christmas, come. doing so, please stand as we sing together the whole of O Come All Ye Faithful.
Let's remind ourselves of the Christmas story on this Christmas day in Luke chapter 2. In these days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be the sign. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth, peace to men, on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning about what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Amen, and thanks be to God for this reading of his word. Another poem from Sally Foster Fulton's book, Hope Was Heard Singing. Seems shepherds always get the worst of it. Cold hillsides and rocky, barren places. Sheep and sheep and more sheep and sleepless nights counting them. No camels to ride or gifts to bear. No wisdom either, just second-hand news. Seems shepherds always get the worst of it. Bathrobes and tea towels and the back of the stage all sharing one line. Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has been made known to us. No tinsel or glitter or gold wings. Seems shepherds always get the worst of it. Minimum wage and zero hours contracts. No pension plan or savings account, no respect either. Just systemic injustice that keeps them in their lowly places. Seems they had something in common with the baby they visited. Later, he would call himself a shepherd. Later, he would lay aside his wants for the needs of his sheep. Later, he would say, if you love me, you will feed my lambs. In the face of the worst, he would give his best. So there is wisdom. There is glory without the gold. And there is hope that there will be justice for those who always seem to get the worst of it. I, I read this poem for the first time um, about three hours ago, and I had never, ever before thought of the shepherds receiving secondhand news. 
Like the angels appear to them and say, there's a baby, you should go find it. And then they go and find it. And it struck me that perhaps the reason I never think of them as having secondhand news is because that's also what happens at Easter. The angels appear to the women and say, he's not here, he's risen, go and tell the others. And they do. And no one says the women had secondhand news of resurrection. But here, it, I can almost see what she means, but almost not. Like, we all would, I think, be a little desperate sometimes for an angel to come and tell us anything. Wouldn't that be amazing if an angel gave us directly a piece of news that we had, didn't even know we were waiting for? But when they go and tell it, I guess it is secondhand news, isn't it? Like, they report what they have heard. So by the time people who are around the manger hear it, it is already secondhand. But also, that's true for Easter. This is exactly how the gospel spreads from the beginning. The very first moment that God tells people of the good news of Christ is spread immediately by word of mouth. And that is still true to this moment. The way the good news spreads is by word of mouth. It is by you, not just me, not just those of us up here with letters behind our names and collars to wear and fancy stuff to put on sometimes. Like, we're not the ones really. It's all of us together just normal Christian people who hear the message, whose job it is to go and tell the others, to share the news of what God has done, to see and tell. So every single person here has received the news secondhand, as it were, but we also here tonight have received the news firsthand. Christ has come among us, and the angels have sung their song, and we are to go and tell the others. That's what it means to be the light, to share the light, to be the body of Christ, is to go and tell everyone so that perhaps they too will ponder these things in their heart. But perhaps more to the point, so perhaps they too will recognize that there is glory without the gold, and there is wisdom without all of the trappings and fanciness that others might have. And there is hope that there will be justice, because this message that comes wrapped in swaddling cloths changes everything about the world. So friends, tonight you hear it firsthand, but go out into these Christmas days and into the year ahead, sharing that news far and wide. May it be so. Amen. Before God in prayer, as we remember and share our prayers for others, let us pray. We'll also share in the words of the Lord's Prayer together. Let us pray. Light of light, Hope of hope, joy of joy, Emmanuel, God is with us. So we greet you this Christmas morning, O living God. Your Son, Jesus Christ, born among us, that we might find the way of truth, light, peace, and hope in our lives. That we might be that light shining in the world, that all may know and see and hear the good news of love. Father, we offer our prayers tonight for those for whom the light seems so far away, those who experience the times of darkness, those who are facing the reality of conflict and war, those who are dealing with the reality of starvation and homelessness, those who are despised by others. We pray for all in difficult situations all those who are struggling, as we think of our own community, our own society, 
in one of the richest economies of the world that we rely on, so many of our people rely on food banks just to feed their families. We pray, Lord, for a more just world. We pray that the light that we know and experience at Christmas may shine brightly through the work of your church, through the work of each individual man, woman, and child as we seek to live the gospel life. We pray for all who are in trouble tonight, wherever they are, whatever trouble they face. Those who face the trouble of illness, those who are in hospital or at home, struggling through difficult times, and those who share that journey with them. Bless them, Lord, and grant them light in the midst of the darkness. Those who have lost a loved one and feel bereft, may your light shine that they may see that reality of hope. We pray for all who are concerned and worried that this Christmas day they may know and hear once more, firsthand or secondhand, the good news that Christ is born in Bethlehem and that the world has changed. Loving God, we offer our prayers for our families and friends. We pray that as we gather and meet and share together in families through this festive time, that your joy may be known and our joy may be full. Loving Father, we remember those who are on their own, and we pray that they may know that you are with them. In a moment of silence, Lord, we bring our own prayers to you. In a moment of silence, we bring our own times, our own experiences, our own needs and wants. And to you, the Lord of light, we offer these prayers now. And so, Father, on this Christmas morning, we as a family share together in these words as we bring our prayers to you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As we continue to march into Christmas Day, as the time continues, we thank you all for coming along this evening. We remind you that there are Christmas services tomorrow morning. Oh, yes, there are. 10 o'clock at St. John's. And if that's too early, 11, 10, 30 here in Old Guru Ashton. And if you want anything later, sorry. We would encourage you at both services, you're coming to either of these two services, please bring something you've received from Christmas. Um, adult, child, doesn't matter, bring anything along. We'd be delighted to see it. Unless, of course, you've been given a new car or something, that might be a bit difficult to get through the door. But please do come and share in our services. And also, we share here in um, Old Guru Ashton with St. John's, St. Ninian's, and ourselves in Old Guru Ashton at... Um, half past 10 on Sunday the 1st of January to bring in and celebrate the new year. Thank you for being here tonight. We're going to close with one of the great carols, Joy to the World.
on this Christmas day. May you go in the peace, love, light, and joy of the living God. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend upon and dwell within your heart this day. Remain with you and be with you. And all whom you love and share your journey with, now and forevermore. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please go safely, stay safe, stay well, look after one another, and thank you for being you. We will put the lights back on, but if you want to take your candles with you, please do so. If you don't, there'll be buckets in the way out. Have a great Christmas day. Enjoy the rest of your Christmas celebrations. A Merry Christmas to you all.